here, homeschooling mom to four, and chaos coordinator since 2009. We are currently in our fourth year of homeschooling. I have a seventh grader, a second grader, a kindergartner, and a toddler that likes to keep things interesting. This video here is um, just the extra supplementary things that we do in our curriculum. There's two items I want to talk about. One is criticalthinking.com. My child came in from the school system. I was a little worried that I would miss something. I was very anxious. Even being a former teacher myself, I was still worried that I wasn't going to meet the expectations. I didn't know how long we'd be doing it. I wanted to make sure she was still meeting the expectations when she went back into school, if that was ever going to be a possibility. It's not a possibility. No, it's not going to happen. I also wanted something to measure my abilities, what I was doing. I needed something for myself to know that I was on the right track. The school system used uh, CTBS testing through Seton testing, and I found out that I can administer that. The only requirement is that I have a bachelor's degree. So I signed up, and after a year, I had my daughter take a test, um, and I was able to compare it to her previous results at the school. It was amazing. The biggest one was math I was paying attention to, and I was interested to see where she was with math. And what it told me was that um, she was exactly where I expected her to be because she really struggled and we took a while to get her where she needed to be for math. She has uh, continued to stay on pace. This last year I didn't do it. We moved and I, I had to let some things go, but we will do the testing eventually again. But the one thing it told me, and I knew this about my daughter, but I didn't know how to explain it, is it told me that her critical thinking going from, you know, she know, she understands A plus B and B plus C, but she she would have a really hard time that that means A equals C. Inference and critical thinking when she was reading. She would have a hard time making assumptions. She's like, well, it didn't say that, Mom. And I said, yeah, but what do you, it's, it's insinuating or foreshadowing. She had a really hard time with those things. And so I found criticalthinking.com and I've tried many of their different things. I would use that as a full curriculum if I could, but it doesn't jive with how my kids think and learn. So I didn't go that route. I would have loved it as a kid. But the ones that I've kept, because I really feel it's important, it does teach them how, how testing goes. So just from a testing standpoint, if they're ever tested in the future, I'm thinking ahead, like ACT, SAT, that type of thing, just the logical part of their brain, it really focuses on uh, thinking skills. And so that's exactly what these are called. It's called building thinking skills. So my kindergartner has one, my second grader has one, and my seventh grader has one. This is my kindergartner's, and it's real basic things. It'll So hers right now is, um, you know, find the mistake in the set, right? What's the mistake? It's the rectangle. It's pretty easy, pretty simple. They just do a couple pages a day. The older kids, it's a little more intense. They, there's a little bit uh, more variety, but they have, you know, multiple choice on words, like what do these words mean and selecting what they mean and things like that. So they just do a couple pages a day. They like certain aspects of it because it goes through different kinds. But this, there's a link below. Critical thinking is how I get them to build those skills that they're not as good at. It's simple, quick, and they do just a little bit of it, a little bit a day, and it's easy to keep track of it. On my end, I can glance at it because my brain does work like this, and so that's how I'm able to keep track of them. The other thing that I used to supplement is I wanted my kids to have some sort of musical teaching, and you guys, I found the solution. It is hands off from me, although I can say I did have to sit through with my seventh grader occasionally because she gets uh, strung in by that clickbait sometimes, um, but it's Hoffman Academy. That is something we pay for. And it is worth every penny. It was a Kickstarter to start. And the way he teaches, from a teaching standpoint and a curriculum and a, and a learning skills standpoint, it's just brilliant. I had piano for three or four years, so I can do the basics. I tell you, if he was my teacher, I probably would have continued and gone on. And yes, it's a video, but the kids just, they giggle all the time. It's fun. He teaches them solfege, which I didn't know what that was. You can look that up. He teaches them the letter names. He teaches them to learn by ear. He does the music theory, all of it. It's very reasonably priced. I don't, I'll post here how much it costs a month for my two kids. I would highly recommend it if you want something. I'm a very big proponent of hands off from mom because that removes the friction of mom being in charge all the time. We're home together a lot during the day. They need a break from mom a little bit. And it also helps with them saying, hey, look what I learned, mom, look what I can do. So I do supervise, you know, have my, the door open to listen to the piano. And by now I know the songs well enough. I know if they're on task or not. Um, but yeah, piano is just a regular thing in our house. They do one lesson a week and then they just 10 minutes, the songs that they've memorized and old ones and new ones and whatever. So those are my two additions that we have to our curriculum that uh, I added over the years and I thoroughly enjoy. Remember, making mistakes is okay. 
just gotta make sure you learn from them. God bless.